Hello and good morning everyone to our Monday morning Facebook Live. I've got to remember, I've got to stop saying that because um, we now have beautiful followers all over the world and I'm always just referring to my Monday morning, but it could be your Sunday evening, it could be a little later in the day. Um, hello and welcome if it is the first time that you have stumbled across this page and you're wondering who this crazy baby lady is. My name is Edwina, I'm a registered midwife and I'm the founder of Birthbeat and my job is to teach childbirth education, baby and child first aid and sleep and settle for zero to two year olds. Uh, all our programs are delivered online. If you are interested in any of the programs or wanna know a little bit more information, all of that information is at www.birthbeat.com. Come and have a look. Often I refer to free resources and I always forget to say this. If I remember after I jump off, I often get a lot of questions straight away. I will pop them in the comments box, some of the free resources that I might mention. But if you ever want to just go and have a look at any of the free resources that I talk about, like how to bath a newborn baby without tears, um, that's a very popular one. What to pack in your labour bags before having a baby. Uh, how to get bub into the optimal birth position. I'm trying to think what all the free resources are there. Um, you can just go to birthbeat.com, click the top button that says, yes, I want free resources. And there's a big list of them there and I send them to your inbox. So it's super duper easy. And then if you're not going to see them for a week or so, you know where they are. I just find sometimes in social media, I'll see something that I like and I never get back to it. So I wanted to make it super easy for you. Um, so you can just pop your email in there. I send the videos to your inbox. Super, super simple. Anyway, please say hello. Let me know where you're watching from. Let me know if you are either currently pregnant or if you have a new little bubba there and start popping your questions in. I answer as many as I can. Those of you that uh, tune in regularly on a Monday and a Thursday morning will know that. Um, if I don't get to them all, jump across to Instagram because I'm going to answer a couple of questions in Instagram as well, or you can send me a DM. So lots and lots of ways. Anybody who's already in our Birthbeat programs, they know that they can access me privately through our closed Birthbeat groups. So say hello, let me know where you're watching from. One of the questions that actually came through on Instagram just before I jumped in here, and I thought hugely helpful, actually there's two questions there, hugely helpful for anyone um, who is currently pregnant. Hello Georgie from the Sumpters. Um, I love being able to see local mums here as well. I'm based in regional New South Wales uh, and I wanted to, I saw Georgie the other day and I wanted to squeeze that gorgeous little bubba and I was on the phone and missed them. Sarah is 40 plus four days pregnant with number two from Perth. Oh, Sarah, I hope you're still comfortable and uh, how exciting. New bub will be here before you know it. Georgie's asked, how long should an umbilical hernia last? Um, so with newborns, it's very common to get umbilical hernias. So a little hernia or inguinal hernias. A little inguinal hernia is a little hernia here in the groin either side, particularly with little boys, you can get them. Um, I would just say get that reviewed by your GP uh, and they will either let you know to either have a paediatric follow up or a referral or whether just to keep an eye on it for a little bit longer. Um, definitely just check with your GP and they'll let you know where to follow that up with Georgie. Um, Danielle, hi, 35 plus one, first baby in Sydney. Hello, Danielle. Um, I just had another mum who the other day said, I'm 35 weeks. I know the access to the course is for 12 months. I don't think I'll use it. And I said, no, 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 I needed to explain the course. I have people joining the course at 39 weeks. Um, and then you still can just binge and do all the childbirth preparation. You have full access to it all. Plus we do have the breastfeeding, the sleep and settle, how to swaddle your baby. Um, there's so much information in there. It's not just about the childbirth education. So I should say that as well. You don't have to join early. Um, a lot of people say, oh, I stumbled across you, you know, at 30 weeks and I'd already done my hospital classes. We are so much more than that. So it's super important that you know that. So Danielle, you being 35 plus one, reminded me to let you all know that you can join our program at any time and you will still 
get all the benefit from it. Anyway, I've been distracted. Let me quickly answer this question because it says, oh, no, my computer died. Um, breach baby, unsuccessful ECV, so now waiting on CS, which is C-section, should I still write birth wishes? And it's such a good question and it's a good question for us all to unpack. So breach baby, again, let's just explain and use this as an opportunity for a bit of education. So that is what we call breach. So I'll do a little stand up here so you can all understand. So this is cephalic. If your baby's head is down, this is the way that it will be sitting into the pelvis. Here's your pelvis, mamas. Bud's head will be down like this. If a baby is breech, they'll be going upside down. So their, bill, their tummy, I mean their bum's going into the pelvis first. That's what we call a frank breech. Then we have what's called a footling breech, where the little foot is coming down first. Now, not all hospitals will that be assumed a C-section. Some hospitals now are doing vaginal breech births because we've learned in the last few years, a bit of background, I find this really fascinating, you might not find it, um, but we continually involve our practice as midwives and obstetricians. And I think it was probably about 20 years ago now um, that somebody wrote a paper saying that delivering babies vaginally breech was more dangerous or more high risk and that they should all be C-sections. So everyone kind of read this paper. Unfortunately, it wasn't very well reviewed and our practice changed. Our practice is now changing back to offering vaginal breech births. So first and foremost, where you're birthing your baby, find out if that is an option to have a vaginal breech birth. Um, and then if it's not, and they're just saying uh, that they don't do that or the C-section is the recommendation, um, again, just talk to your care provider around that. An ECV, which this mama has already had, is where it's called external cephalic version, where they relax all the muscles around the baby. And we actually, from the outside, try and manually rotate bub so that they're head down. So that's what an ECV is. So it's a failed ECV, just saying it didn't work. And then the third part to the question is, should I still write birth wishes? Now, I think that this mum must be part of our online course because I teach you how to write birth wishes, not a birth plan. Why do I say that? Because often, particularly as women, and if you're anything like me, if I have a plan and I feel like it doesn't go to plan, I feel like there's some failure there and there is no failure in birth. No one fails at birthing their baby. Whereas birth wishes, it's this is what I want, this is what I wish for, and then it's acknowledging that some of that may be out of our control and we're okay with that. So it's a lot of mental and mindset preparation that you need to work through when you're preparing to have a baby. And that's what we teach at Birthbeat and I think it's super important. So yes, 100% still document your birth wishes. It might be that you want to have the screen down so that you can watch bub coming out of your belly. It might be that you want skin to skin straight away. It might be that you want, you don't know the sex yet of your baby. So you want to save the sex or discover the sex or your babe or your partner wants to discover the sex. Um, it may be that you want to cut the cord or your partner wants to cut the cord. It may be when you go to recovery that you want to keep bub on your chest the whole time having skin to skin. All of these things can form part of your birth wishes. It might be around visitors, it might be around before you go down to theatre, it might be there's so much that you can still include in your birth wishes to really create and make it your special day. It might be a particular song you want on theatre or playlist, like all of that can happen but it's about knowing what's available to you. So yes, first and foremost, super duper important that you put your birth wishes there. Um, and I just think that's an important one for us all to unpack and know. All right, sorry, I am just going to jump back to the questions. Hello, hello. Ashley, hi. Hi, Edwina. I'll be 36 weeks tomorrow. I've been getting Braxton Hicks for the last couple of weeks, but the last couple of days I've been having quite painful ones in my lower back and pelvis. This is a consistent pain that doesn't go away. Um, does this mean labor could be in the next couple of weeks? Oh, Ashley, if I had a crystal ball to answer that, I 100% would. I, I think the biggest thing for me to say is to understand your different stages of labor. 
So Braxton Hicks, everybody who's watching who doesn't know, I like false contractions. They still feel like contractions. You might still feel your uterus go nice and tight and you can feel everything going hard. However, they're not dilating the cervix. So that's the difference between regular contractions. Braxton Hicks as well, don't get more intense and um, don't sort of stay for longer periods of time. Once you go into labor, it becomes more intense and it becomes like they get not only more regular, but they become more intense. To manage Braxton Hicks, if you're walking around, lying down will sometimes settle them down, or if you're lying down, getting up and walking around will help settle them down. Um, but you are 36 weeks now and painful pains in my lower back and pelvis. So firstly for you, Ashley, if you are part of our online program, go and do the stretches in the prenatal yoga and um, stretch section at the beginning of the course, because all of our women in the birth beat course, it is hugely helpful just to help release all that tension and pain in your hips and pelvis and lower back. Um, so Deb, the yoga instructor in our course is amazing at showing you ways to do that. Um, if not, try a lot of on all fours or leaning over the couch, that's going to help with that lower back pain. Uh, if this is a consistent pain that doesn't go away as well, I would talk to your midwife um, because it's not normal to be in consistent pain. We don't want you to be in pain preparing to go into labour. We want you to be well rested, comfortable and um, looking forward to the labour as opposed to exhausted and you've been in pain for weeks. Uh, if it is consistent pain, I'd say it's more pelvis related. Try those all fours um, and just doing some soft, gentle rocking on all fours to try and take the pressure that you're probably feeling here and here. So getting onto all fours can help with that. Uh, and I don't know if it means you're going into labor. That's the, that's the beauty of labor. And it is just about surrendering to that. Even if someone says to you, oh, I think you could be going into labor in the next couple of days, they don't know, okay? It's just an educated guess. Um, we are all really guessing, we don't know, and we can't rush it. So the best thing for you to be doing is getting comfortable, Ashley, so that you're not feeling like you really wanna rush the next few weeks. I hope that is helpful. Yep, um, Georgie's just said with that little umbilical horn, hernia, um, GP has suggested to monitor for up to two years. Totally normal, and I hear that quite a bit. And it's really common. Um, Amy has said, morning, I'm 35 weeks pregnant and iron deficient. Will this make my birth any different? My midwife is monitoring this with blood tests every two weeks. Um, Amy, it's not so much that it would make your affect your actual birth. However, in the preparation and the lead up, uh, being deficient in iron can make us feel very fatigued. So you're probably feeling quite tired. Um, I'm gonna assume that you're on some sort of iron supplement. Can I just add or ask, are you also taking some sort of vitamin C supplement or drinking fresh orange juice, um, something like that at the same time that you're taking your iron? Why I say that is because there's a lot of research to say that the absorption of the iron into our own body and systems is helped if you're having some vitamin C at the same time. That's why some iron supplements already have it with vitamin C. Um, if they don't, I just encourage you to be squeezing some fresh oranges. If you're in Australia, oranges are beautifully in season, so you can just make some fresh orange juice when you're taking your iron supplement. Um, and again, depending how low that iron is, you may consider an iron transfusion. However, it will take up to two weeks to have its full benefit. But what you don't wanna be doing is preparing and going into labor, already feeling tired and exhausted because it is like a marathon. Um, I hope that is helpful. Taylor, hi Edwina. Um, sleep question, a four and a half month old is a dream babe for sleeping, yay. Um, we have followed your guides since they were launched. Yay, sleeping through and great day naps. She is even um, self-settling, great. Now that we are transitioning to arms out, love to dream suits, she's waking regularly and becoming a little night monster. Um, we need to have arms out though as she's rolling both ways. Any tips to continue to persevere and will it improve? Thanks. Taylor, it t sounds to me like A, well done, doing a wonderful job. I'm so glad that you are help finding the guides helpful. 
Um, it does sound to me though like she's going through her four month sleep regression and it is timed with the arms out. Now this sleep regression can take up to two weeks so stay really consistent with everything that I've taught you about the sleep environment, about resettling, about how to follow her tide cues so that she's not over tired or under tired. It will pass. However, on top of that, now that she is rolling, let her use that a lot during the day. Let her use all of those new skills, whether it's you know starting to push up and things like that. Really let her use them over and over and over during the day and then she's going to be less likely to be waking up during the night. It does sound to me like classic four months sleep regression. It will pass, stay consistent using the course, um, using everything that I've taught you already. Um, and you will get your beautiful sleeper back. It really is just a stage that you need to be getting through. And it will probably happen again at six months and eight months and whenever they have one of those big leaps. But um, persevere is, is exactly it, but it really is about staying consistent. So well done. I am so glad you've liked the program. Um, Amy said, yeah, she's given me iron tablets and vitamin C and yes, I'm constantly sleepy. Yeah, I think we, um, I think we really underestimate sharing that with mums as well, how exhausted iron deficiency can make us feel. So, um, definitely Amy, keep an eye on that. I, I'm curious to know really how low it is, um, and ask your midwife if, if there is the opportunity to be having an iron transfusion because you don't want the next five to six weeks. Um, to be a time when you're feeling really, really exhausted. Um, so keep up the iron, keep up the vitamin C, even just some fresh orange juice will be helpful for you, mama. Um, now, any other questions, pop them up there for me, won't you? I did have one other one that I thought would be helpful to everybody who watches these lives, which is, hi, I'm 23 weeks with a low placenta. What happens if it doesn't move up the further I get? And again, this is a question I get a lot in our online program. Um, so placenta is often low lying at the beginning of your pregnancy and it starts to creep up as your baby grows. And because we do ultrasound and because we do see um, images from such an early stage, a lot of people will say they you know, have low lying placenta. But sometimes it's actually appropriate for still, but at 23 weeks, we would expect it to start going up. Um, so what will be happen is you'll be booked in for another ultrasound so that they can be checking where your placenta is then. If you have any bright bleeding, anything like that, your GP or your midwife or obstetrician would have told you about what to expect then. So it's really important that you understand that and that you speak to a care professional if you're not sure. Um, you may have been told not to have sex or to have any sort of sexual intercourse. It just depends on where your placenta is. So just make sure that you check and you're clear on that. However, it's very likely that your placenta will come up the uterine wall. However, if at your next scan, the, uter um, the, the placenta hasn't started to creep up, you do have to um, talk to your care provider. It is likely that if the placenta doesn't sort of go up, because if the placenta's here and the baby's head is going to push on that when it's, when it's labor and birth time, that's when we can get bleeding and abruption. So we don't want that. Um, it is likely that you'll have a C-section or be planned, uh, planned, booked in for a C-section if the placenta doesn't come up. But you've got a long time until you need to worry about that. Okay, mama? Because you're only 23 weeks. So it is likely that the placenta will go back up. For now, you'll just be booked in for another ultrasound. Um, Danielle has said, I've been told my baby is in the 95th percent is this classed as a big baby and how often are they actually as big as they think oh my gosh Danielle if I had a dollar for every woman who is told that she has a big baby and I don't want to say that and discredit for when people do have really big babies it's rare and we can what we can see that but I think it's really important to say between zero and a hundred is just like uh, it's the spectrum for normal babies. Someone has to be at zero, somebody has to be at 100. Theo is in the 97th percentile, my little boy, if that makes you feel any better, Danielle. However, it is just a guide. We don't know the size and the um, weight of a baby until they're actually born. What kind of pisses me off or worries me when people are told that they have a big baby 
if then you start to doubt yourself and you have this thought of, oh my gosh, you know, am I going to be able to birth this baby? Am I going to be able to push this baby out? What's it going to do to my vagina? Is there going to be pain or is there going to be birth trauma? And I think it's actually more that it, what it does is plays on our mind. I worked with a beautiful obstetrician a few years ago and as he said to a woman who he was supporting, he said, it's so unlikely, it's very rare that a body will create a baby and hold a baby that you're not capable of birthing in terms of just size. Now, I am acknowledging that sometimes, you know, there are really, really big babies and that's okay. And the obstetricians and the midwives and the GPs can manage that. But the 95th percentile, or the 97th percentile, it really is just a guide. We do not know. I just had a birth beat mum the other day and she was told all through her pregnancy she had gestational diabetes, that it was going to be a big baby. Um, her big baby was 2.7 kilos. So a teeny tiny little baby. And she was like, it just really does reinforce that it is a guide, but don't let that sort of play with your mental preparation for birthing this baby or make you feel scared or like you're not able to birth your baby. Um, it really is just a guide, so just keep reminding yourself of that. I hope that is helpful, Danielle. All right, team, that was an excellent lot of questions. You guys are so awesome. Please, as always, share this with any pregnant friends or anybody who's expecting. Let them know that this resource is here. If you do want any of our free resources, make sure you just head over to birthbeat.com and get those into your hands um, so that you are truly prepared for your best birth. All right, talk to you all soon. Bye.